if you want to fulfill all the promises of God in your life and walk into your destiny and walk into all that God has called you to in life, it will not happen automatically. Sometimes you could be ignorant to think if God has promised me this or that it should happen because he said it. Yes, he said it, but you need to enforce it through prayer and you walking in the principles that the Bible has laid out. In Matthew 7 verse 7, the scripture talks about these three words which are the action steps around effective prayer. Number one, he said, ask, seek, and knock. These are all verbs which are action words. And if these words are wrapped around prayer, it makes you and I to see that prayer is not an act of inactivity that is reserved for someone who does not have a job or someone who has much time in their hands. So now it looks like prayer is for the poor people. And this wrong notion around prayer could make you think prayer is for people who don't have anything to do. Second thing is that prayer is not a shortcut to living a better life. But I believe that prayer is a life hack that God has given to us as believers such that we can live life and walk in purpose. Because nobody on this earth has discovered life fully. And each person has a prescription for his or our life, but God only knows what is his best desire for each of us. And the only way for us to receive these desires is for us to enforce it through prayer. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. The number one point around this cycle of effective prayer is when you pray, know your position. Imagine if you have a good friend who cares for you and really wants to help you every time you are in need and you are facing a particular problem or an issue. What will stop your friend from helping you? I think the simple answer is you not asking your friend for help. If you don't ask, how will your friend know that you are in need so that they could help you? Because they have a desire and it has to help. They want to help. They always want to be there for you. And if you never ask, you will never receive the help you need. And that is what happens when you complain and whine about your problems and talk about it and post about it and seldom pray about it. How will God answer you or give you the help you need if you never ask of Him? God will not meddle in your business if you don't need His help. Yeah, you can say, God knows that I'm suffering through this. God knows that I'm going through that. God knows how life is hard with me. God knows how tough things are. If he wants to help me, he should just help me. But God said, the principle is, you need to do something. You need to ask. It is not on you for you to receive what you ask. But it's on you to ask. It takes humility for you to come to God and say, I need help. I am in need. I am weak. I need your strength. And you need to humble yourself to that point to ask of God. Scripture says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. That humility is you coming to God to let him know I am weak. Because sometimes you want to act so strong before people and show people how strong you are, but you have a friend. So what is your position when you pray? Know that it is a position of relationship with God. And scripture has made you know in context of that Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, a father on earth who is wicked, the child will not come to him and ask him of bread and he will bring stone. Neither will the child ask him of fish and he will give the child a snake. What do you suppose of your good father in heaven? He is a good, good father. An awesome father who wants to help. So let me encourage you with this scripture. You can pray for anything. If you have faith, you will receive it. So the condition when you are asking is for you to ask and believe that God will do it. You have to believe in the willingness of God to do it and in his ability to do what you ask him to do. That is how you will receive it. And sometimes it will be about you receiving an answer which is you asked him for something and he answered you and that is what you receive. And sometimes it will be about him doing everything you asked him to do when it's according to his will. But your duty always is to ask. Don't relent to ask. And to add this other scripture around your position while you're asking, in Ephesians chapter 2, it said, 
And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Where is Christ seated if I might ask you? Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And scripture says here that we were raised up with him when we believed and seated with him in the heavenly places in him. Which means we are in Christ at the right hand of the Father in heaven. How beautiful is this picture? I will reckon that when you pray, you think about this picture. That you are in Christ at the right hand of the Father. Which is, if this is the Father, Christ is at the right hand of the Father, which means he looks at the Father's face. He has the Father's attention. The Father's listening here is open to him. And all he needs to do if he's in trouble is to ask. And that is your position because you are seated in Christ. That is why he said, ask anything that you need in my name because you are seated in me. And we, as believers, need to have this boldness to come to God and ask him, Daddy. In a relationship, in a union that we get to sit with him and talk. Father, I am weak. I need your strength. This is a beautiful picture for you to know. Number two thing about this cycle is seek the Lord and take responsibility. Somehow when you hear seek and you find, you might start thinking about the things to seek, which is riches, money, and walking about all other things. But this might be as a result of the need-based teachings that we have received. Or if you like, coming to God and being a Christian is about these material things. I'm not saying here that God doesn't want to bless you materially because your blessing and prosperity from God is all inclusive. Material possession is part of it, but it's not the major thing. The major thing is for you to seek God himself. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that you desire in life will be added unto you, which is the number one thing to seek is the Lord. Before you start thinking about money, Scripture says that if you run after money, money will grow wings and fly. So if you get to know this, you would know that seeking this, the principle goes wrong when you seek money and it keeps running and then you weary yourself out seeking it. But if you seek the Lord, it's like a magnet drawing all those riches, drawing all those blessings into your life. Like Christ told the disciples who toiled all night. Threw the net by the right side and they did. And they caught a net breaking, boat sinking load of fish. How? They had Christ in their midst. They had Christ with them. That changed everything. If you only would seek the Lord, but then you need to take responsibility. Seeking and finding is a principle that whatever you seek, you will find. And this can go negative because if you seek trouble, you're going to find trouble. <laughs> On the positive, as a believer, whatever you seek, you find. If you need wisdom from the Lord, the Bible says, ask the Lord of wisdom. But you don't just stop at asking him for wisdom. You know, in his word, you can find wisdom to live life. You can open your Bible and go through the book of Proverbs and find real wisdom to go through life. Because in the pages of the scripture, you find Christ and you find his wisdom in them. But if you tell yourself, I'm seeking God, and all you do is going to sing to God, I want more of you. And you keep seeing here, one more of you, one more of you. But you never take out time to study the word of God. All you do is sit and bench watch your favorite show and enjoy yourself. But you're telling God with your mouth, I want more of you. How are you going to get more of him? Getting more of him needs you to take responsibility. Open your Bible, read and ask the Holy Spirit to unveil this scripture to you. Listen to anointed messages from the word of God. It's all over YouTube. It's all over anywhere you might be watching. Sermons. God has made it easier now through technology that you can find and look for trusted messages that are anointed by God. And let's talk about the practical aspect of life. Maybe you are seeking a job. You don't ask God for a job and sit at home and watch TV. If you are to be on your phone, you should be looking for sites to apply. And these applications are going to come with a tone of rejections. You have to be aware of that. That because you apply does not mean the door will be opened automatically. That because you apply doesn't mean you'll be given the job. Sometimes you'll be rejected. Or many times you'll be rejected. But that doesn't stop you. You need to keep on seeking till you find. You're looking for a good relationship. You need to take the time that you're single and work on yourself to become a good person. So that when you meet someone, you can detect who they are. Because we always mirror who we are to the people we meet. If my standard is raised... When I meet someone that is not up to that standard, I will know. So it will help me weed out some people that are not supposed to come into my life 
relationally. But if you don't take out time to do something, to seek growth, to seek direction, you will actually still remain in the same place. And that is why this is a cycle of prayer. You have to seek prayerfully. Scriptures in Jeremiah said, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. If only you open your heart and look for him and be sincere and intentional and serious about it, you are going to find him. And in God dwells everything you need because God is in control of everything. You need wisdom. You need healing. What do you need? It's in God. You will find it in God. You cannot find it anywhere else. That is why your prayer life should come to a place of seeking, desiring more of God, yearning for more of God, waiting on the Lord and sitting at his feet. It is nothing for God to give you a good job. It is nothing for God to bring you into a good relationship. But God doesn't want you to sabotage that good relationship because you are not grown. God doesn't want to give you a job that now the job takes over your life and then you cannot trust him again. Because God can trust you with a taxing job that is well paying and all he needs is that this should draw you closer to him. The pressure should make you look for more of him and not go away from him and be like, the work is so stressful. That is why I'm not able to pray again. God doesn't want to bring you to such a place whereby you are separated from him because he wants the best for you. The number three cycle is knocking is through your worship. Or should I say knocking is through worshiping. That scripture in Matthew chapter 7, the Amplified Version said, Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be opened. The truth is, the way you knock is through your worship. Your worship is the gentle knock on the door. Your worship is a sweet smelling sour to God. A sweet smelling aroma because it makes your life pleasing to God. And once God is pleased with your life, that is a knock on the door. That is a knock on the door of your calling. That is a knock on the door of your destiny. That is how the door will be opened unto you. The knocking is not about you barging into the door and knocking. Boo, 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 boo. Open the door. Oh God, give me this, give me that. As if it's a rebellious child that tells the father, give me all my property. Let me find my own way. Just give me all my property. Let me go live my life like the prodigal son. God says, no. When your life is pleasing to me, that is a knock on the door. And the door will be opened unto you. That is why the Amplified Fashion say, knock on the door reverently. It is through your life. Your worship is not about the words of your lips. It is about the fruit of your life, which is the way you live life, how you please God, the way you talk, your actions, the way you treat people, they are all acts of worship. Then when you come to a place of knowing how to have gratitude and coming to the scripture that says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. You know how to bask in the glory of God and worship God and show gratitude to God. That is a knock on the door. Knock and the door will be open. It is a place of constantly knowing that all your life is not just about living as you want, but living to please one person, God. So knock and the door will be open was not about you coming to God and yelling in prayer aggressively as if to tell God, if you don't do this, I'm not leaving you. So coming to God and knock for the door to be open is not a process of aggressively coming to God to tell him, God, 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 I need you to do this for me. No, it is about your life pleasing God. The scripture says, when people's life please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. Again, in Proverbs 18, it said, A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. So another point I will give you here is that the knock on the door is your gift. Your gift of a smile can open doors for you. It's a knock on the door. God doesn't call you to be mean to people. God didn't call you to live a life whereby you are hurting people. God wants you to live a life that you are a blessing to people. That is a knock on the door that doors will open to you. When you are operating in the gifts that God has given you, it starts with the fruit of the Spirit. There are gifts that God has given you that if you wear them like a cloth and you walk out in love and you walk out in joy and you walk out in peace, doors are opening. You walk out with self-control and long-suffering, which is patience. Doors are opening because people get to trust your personality. You get to have loyalty. Your integrity is upheld. That is when doors will be opened unto you. And God says, keep on knocking with your worship, with your life, 
with your reverence to me. I hope this video is beneficial and you've learned something from it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It is a pleasure for you to keep on watching and I would like you to give this video a thumbs up if it has blessed you. I am over my pan. This is my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share this video to your family and your friends and your loved ones. Drop in the comment section what you've learned about this video or which point of this video has resonated with you. Thanks so much. God bless you.